predicting the next winning number on the roulette wheel. It's been done before and in this video I'll explain how you can look for situations where you can do it too. Now I did consider not sharing this video with anybody. I know for a fact there will be loads of trolls in the comments giving me a hard time. But it's something all roulette players want to know and with over a decade working in the casino industry from a trainee dealer all the way up to a casino manager I have valuable information to share on the topic of predicting the outcome on the roulette wheel. What I'm going to share is by no means easy to identify and implement. You're not going to be able to walk up to the next roulette table and predict the exact number the ball is about to land in. But if you watch this video until the end, you are going to be far more aware of potential patterns and find yourself in a situation where you're able to have a huge advantage over the casino. Let's run an example to prove my point. Here's a sequence of previous winning roulette numbers on an American roulette wheel. 23, 8, 7, 14, 36, 10, 9, 4. Despite having a small community of the smartest casino players on YouTube, I would be pleasantly surprised if even 1 in 10,000 viewers could predict the next winning number. Don't be discouraged if you have absolutely no idea what the next number would be. I'll reveal the pattern later in the video and how you can potentially predict the next number from a seemingly random batch of winning numbers. Now before I share these unseen patterns and how to detect them, I want to address two undeniable examples of players making millions of dollars by predicting the outcomes of a roulette game. You'll see how the method I'm about to share with you is a mixture of these two successful examples. Our first example takes us back to the 1970s, where a mathematician named Richard Jericke used what's known as wheel bias to take casinos in the French Riviera for over $8 million. This system essentially found old roulette tables that had wears and tears, which resulted in specific numbers winning more often. I've done a separate video on Richard Jericke's system. You can watch that after this one. Our next example is a bit more recent. It happened at the Ritz Casino London in 2004 and involved a method known as sector targeting. Sector targeting is where the trajectory of the ball and the speed of the wheel is calculated to predict where the ball is going to land. It can't predict the exact number, but it's fascinatingly accurate at predicting sections of the wheel. It's near enough impossible to calculate this without technology, and you can watch the video on the team that scammed the Ritz with the laser technology after this. Now, the fact I'm discussing these two well-known cases of roulette prediction indicates two things. Number one, it can be done. Number two, the casinos know it can be done and therefore they've implemented everything they can to stop it from happening. In our first example of wheel bias, casinos no longer use old and damaged roulette wheels. They know it could cost them far more if another Richard Jericke exploited it than it would to simply replace the wheel. In our second example of the Ritz Casino losing millions to sector targeting, online and offline casinos have tried to combat this in different ways. Traditional casinos don't allow gadgets near the roulette wheels as well as security staff being on high alert for anybody who may be hovering around the roulette table trying to copy the same system that played out in the Ritz. Online casinos have gone a step further and won't allow players to make their bets whilst the ball is spinning. Ask yourself this, if the concept of sector targeting is complete nonsense, why do online casinos stop you from betting once the dealer has spun the ball? Surely it's in the casino's interest to encourage players to get more money on the table each spin. That's because sector targeting is not nonsense and it can be calculated, especially playing roulette online if you have the specialised technology. Fortunately for us as the player, the roulette prediction method I'm about to explain doesn't rely on us making bets whilst the ball is spinning and I actually recommend playing online roulette to give yourself the best chance of success. Okay, so now you're familiar with the Richard Jericke story and the Ritz Casino story, 
Here's how we combine them together to unveil roulette patterns and make our own predictions. We're going to find bias roulette dealers to help us win with sector targeting bets. Now, before you click off this video, or worse, start smashing that unlike button and calling me a dickhead in the comments, I'm not talking about bribing roulette dealers to put the ball in our favorite winning numbers. I'm talking about identifying a dealer's bias when spinning the ball and exploiting it. How in the world are we going to do that, you're probably asking. Let me explain with another story, but this one isn't one you can Google on the internet. This happened to me in my first weeks working as a casino dealer. Back when I was 21, I worked on a cruise ship as a trainee dealer. And when I first started, I wasn't very good. I had an absolute bitch as my supervisor. She was an old school Romanian supervisor that had been living and breathing casinos for more than 30 years. She knew everything there was to know about casinos and their games, and she wanted to make sure I knew how much smarter she was than me. Every single day, I felt on edge as Isabel would stand over me and scrutinize every mistake I made. And in her defense, there were quite a few. Anyway, one day whilst I was dealing a very boring game of roulette, where there was just an old couple placing minimum bets on the outside chances, Isabel picked up a roulette card and started drawing on it. Roulette cards are just simple cards on the side of the table, mainly for new players, explaining the game rules and payouts. They include a picture of the roulette wheel and a place to record the previous winning spins. After nine or 10 spins, as soon as I spanned the ball for the next round, she stormed up behind me with her miserable face and showed me the roulette card she had been drawing on. I looked down and she had highlighted a section of the roulette wheel with her pencil. As the ball span, she tapped at the section she had highlighted on her paper and her face changed from her usual miserable frown to an almost mischievous smug smile. The ball landed and lo and behold, it was in the exact section she had highlighted. I paid the old couple their winnings and turned to Isabel with a perplexed look and simply asked, how did you know that? For the first time in the two weeks I had known her, she laughed and jokingly said, my gypsy blood. I laughed with her for a little bit, mainly out of fear as to what would happen to me if I didn't. But as she stopped laughing, I said, but seriously, how did you know that? Or did you just get lucky? Implying that she just got lucky was the equivalent to kicking her in the balls. She could not allow me to think it was pure luck and so proceeded to tell me that I needed to change my spin. At that moment in time, I thought she was just being a dick. She managed to go two hours without picking on me, and so now she was going to tell me I was spinning the roulette ball wrong, just so she could stamp her authority and belittle me. What she did next changed my outlook on the game of roulette forever and gave me the knowledge only a true casino veteran would have. Despite only being on the table for 20 minutes or so, she took me off the roulette table and we went to sit on an empty table. Look at the numbers you've spun since being at the table. I looked at the screen where all the previous spins were recorded. I remember looking at the board and being completely confused. There was no pattern of red or black numbers, no numbers that had won more than once. What was she talking about? And why did she have such a grudge against my roulette dealing? I was simply spinning the ball and doing my best to calculate the payouts. Now this happened more than 10 years ago. And truth be told, I don't remember the exact numbers on the board. So I have used example numbers to emphasize the same point she made to me. Let's go back to our pattern of numbers I shared at the start of the video. So we had 23, 8, 7, 14, 36, 10, 9, and 4. What did you think the next number would be? Now, if you've got the right answer, I'm willing to bet your IQ is over 200, you've worked in the casino industry, or you've had experience analyzing bias roulette dealers before. There's a couple of potentially right answers. If you answered 3, 24, or 36, then I'm very impressed. Let me explain a couple of factors you need to consider for this pattern to make sense. When a roulette dealer spins the ball, they alternate the direction after every spin. For example, on spin one, 
the wheel moves anti-clockwise and the ball is span clockwise. On spin two, the wheel moves clockwise and the ball is span anti-clockwise. Spin three, back to an anti-clockwise wheel and a clockwise ball, and so on. This is important to know because the technique used to spin the ball clockwise and anti-clockwise is completely different. And therefore, any bias that the dealer might have, it's very, very unlikely they will have a bias spinning both clockwise and anti-clockwise. But some dealers, especially brand new dealers, can have a bias when spinning the ball in a particular direction. Going back to our number pattern, my bias was only when I spanned the ball anti-clockwise. I found this very difficult to do and so would try my absolute best every single spin to launch the ball as fast as I possibly could every time. Now we've identified my clockwise spin had no bias and was completely random, we can ignore them as there's no pattern, but instead concentrate only on the spins when the ball span anti-clockwise. It's also important to know that when you're learning to deal roulette, you are taught to release the ball from the previous winning number. So looking at the anti-clockwise spins, I've spun the ball from eight into seven, then a 14 into 36, then a 10 into a nine. And then the next time I spin anti-clockwise is from the number four. Following this pattern, I'm spinning into the exact opposite side of the wheel every anti-clockwise spin. Therefore, the next section of numbers that my eagle-eyed supervisor highlighted on her piece of paper was 3, 24 and 36, and that's where it landed. Now, as ridiculous as this might sound, as I move through the ranks in the casino industry, I witnessed this phenomenon happen multiple times, specifically with newly trained dealers. Here's why it's most common with trainee dealers. First of all, when you are a brand new dealer, you take your training and the procedures quite literally. For example, you are told by the rule book that on your next spin, you need to release the ball at the number that was previously a winner. As you become a more experienced dealer, you realize it doesn't matter so much. But without a doubt, the most influential reason why this phenomenon occurs with trainee dealers is because they try their absolute best to spin the ball as fast as they possibly can every single spin. The longer they can get the ball to spin around the wheel, the more time they have to prepare themselves for the winning number, monitor the table, and even begin to calculate potential payouts they are nervous about. Not only this, but having a powerful spin is a sign of maturity and they'll want to impress the supervisor and players watching them. Now to prove how consistent this is, run an experiment with me. Click your fingers as loud as you can. Now do it again two more times. What was the difference in sound level? Basically non-existent, right? They were probably all just as loud as each other. Well, that's essentially what happens with trainee dealers when they spin the ball as fast as they can again and again. It's remarkable how similar the speed of the ball is each and every time. Now you're probably saying, well, okay, but what about the speed of the wheel rotating in the opposite direction? And you'd be right, that is a major factor. And again, trainee dealers have a knack for spinning the wheel at the same speed every time they spin. As they're learning their craft, they somewhat subconsciously create the same conditions over and over again. Now I'll confess, the example of picking three out of 38 numbers that the ball is going to land in is a bit of an extreme one, but it emphasizes the very real concept of bias roulette dealers. To increase your chances of winning, you will need to pick a sector of the wheel of about 10 numbers. When I was a casino manager, I witnessed a trainee dealer with an extremely obvious spin bias, and it would happen more than 80% of her spins. When dealing clockwise, she would spin the ball straight back into the section where the ball had just landed. The amount of times she hit the same number twice in a row was truly staggering. A smart player paying attention could have made a fortune. I had to inform the supervisor by politely showing them I could predict within five numbers where the ball was going to land. It didn't happen every time, but it was significant enough to create a huge edge for anybody 
perspicacious enough to spot the pattern. Now some of these spin biases are going to be much harder to spot than the two examples I've given. Landing in the exact opposite side of the wheel or landing in the same section is quite an obvious bias when you know how to spot them. Others will land a quarter of the way around, some two thirds, and like I said at the start of the video, spotting these patterns is far from easy. I also mentioned earlier in the video that I actually recommend playing online roulette with this method. The reason for that is twofold. First, because that's where most trainee dealers start. They have no additional responsibilities like calculating the winning bet and ensuring players aren't cheating. They will be fully focused on spinning that ball as fast as they possibly can. Second, the example I've just given is playing American roulette. When playing online roulette, you can choose a European wheel that has a much lower house edge. I've spent a lot of time finding the best online casinos to play live roulette at. I can't promise there will be trainee dealers with spin bias, but I can promise they are the best on the market with the best sign-up bonuses, customer service, as well as being audited and vetted by myself. Check out the link in the description to have a look for yourself. Now, even if you refuse the evidence I've shared with you in this video and you're adamant that the winning roulette number is completely random, using this roulette prediction method can do you no harm. If you believe it's truly random, then your probability of winning has certainly not decreased by trying to find a biased roulette dealer. If you're interested in learning more tips and strategies when playing roulette, watch this video next. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like the video to counteract the wave of online trolls. Share it with a friend and perhaps you can both find a biased roulette dealer to predict the winning numbers the next time you play roulette.